Well, I told you I'd see what I could do about making a video, and I haven't gotten these things back in yet. But, uh, let me just go through these knives with you. These, these I bought in uh, Paris in a place called Pigalle, and uh, I got this one. They're all 13 inch, they're not red dots. I wish they were. But uh, I think they're just bell trains. Uh, they're really not anything special, but at the same time, I don't know, switch blades are getting, <laughs> man, I tell you, they're getting up there. Uh, but if you run in to Picklock Pat, man, I tell you, that guy's work is just amazing. And when he started out, I don't know how long he'd been at it when he made this knife, but I'm betting he's been at it a long time. Man, this thing fires. Uh, it's just incredible. It's all my, this, this is Mother of Pearl right here. And the guy, the guy does real good work. There's a guy named Vitalian, I think, uh, and I think Dalton. Both of those guys, they make great knives, but man, I tell you, you can't touch them for, uh, you know, short of, you know, the price of a car. So, uh, I let one of these go. He had one that he made. It was a 13-inch with a crisp blade, a file work all the way around it. Uh, with a, It was a coffin type of handle and a skull for a button. And he, he built it for me, and he sold it to me for, I don't know, it was probably about 200 bucks shipped. And the thing just wasn't open and right. It was kind of just a little bit tight. And I told him about it. And back then, I could get Microtex for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And I didn't really foresee that these knives would go up this high in value. But they did. I sent it back. He sold it, and I think... That thing's got to be worth at least 1900 or maybe more than that. But, yeah, this is another one I got in Paris. Same place. Now, these... This one here is a custom... Uh, a custom knife. And it's just... It's beautiful. I really like it. My uncle got that for me. I don't know where in the world he got it, but he lived in Paris at the time, and uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful knife, and I don't know who built it, but they did a real good job on it, but uh, this one, okay, now here we're getting, in Amsterdam, when I was over in Holland, I went into this cigar shop, and they had these knives in a glass case. And you can see here, I'm trying to get, what I'm using is I'm using this flip video camera. So it's kind of a really crappy, uh, it needs to be a better, uh, a better camera, but I'm just doing the best I can. But this says, uh, I think Hommel. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but... I bought that one, and then these are the ones you're talking about. These, I didn't know if they were used for cutting cigars or what they were used for, but I just thought they were amazing knives. And when I saw yours, I mean, when I saw your whole collection, the first first thing I noticed was that knife. You do have one that's called, it's uh, on the blade, it should say Rizzuto Estiletto. And that is the only knife I've seen that, that you've got the only knife I've seen without the actual swing guard uh, pieces. It's a, it's a swing guard that you've got. But uh, I haven't seen one without the ears on it. Yeah, this is... Uh, the, the, both of these knives, I bought them at the same place at the same time in Amsterdam, same shop. Uh, they're real tight. They've got a good makeup. I saw, I think I saw one or two on blade auction. And, uh, man, you used to be able to get 
such wicked knives uh, off blade auction and they shut down and I've been having a hard time finding good switch blades ever since but a lot of the switch blades I just picked up over the years but yeah these two are the ones you're you're talking about and uh, yeah Amsterdam is where I got them and if you got yours in Spain uh, chances are I don't know they were probably produced uh, somewhere over in Europe but yeah it doesn't it doesn't have the it goes all the way through on there and on these bell trains they don't uh, but yeah I like the red dot uh, red dot bell trains you've got those things are those things are hard to get they're rare and I don't know if they're pick locks or not I haven't looked at them close enough but I'll check it out but yeah the the grooves that I was talking about on the back of this uh, I think that's probably an assembly point, but I'm not sure. But yeah, these these knives, I really like them. And when I got them, this actually, this one, that one, this one, and this one, <laughs> which isn't a fancy one at all. What's it say? Uh, Toreo. It's F-E-S. Yeah, I got this one at the same place. And it's got a weird type of uh, bar system in it. And that's why I like it. Uh, I don't like the grips. The grips could probably be replaced, but I'm not that handy at doing it. It's something like Pat would be able to, able to do. But the transfer... Uh, transfer in this it's it's got a real strange uh a strange way of opening for that to go down instead of up uh, i just found it to be kind of odd and the inside of this is just it's got a weird system in it i'm not sure what what it's made out of but yeah these these knives uh yeah i like these these are really good and hey man you've got a good collection and if you get, you know, if you get any more time, shoot some more videos up because I always like checking out, checking out good knives. But if you run into Sharper Deals, uh, sharperdeals.com, Picklock Pat, if you see, he used to take, he used to take these and he did, he used to mainly work on swing guards and bell trains when, when he was, when he was making, uh, this knife, uh, he was mainly what he'd do is he'd take the bell trains and he'd take the swing guard and he'd put this file work in. And then he finally just said, Well, hell, I'm going to make everything from scratch. I talked to him about a week ago and I hadn't talked to him in years. And uh, he says he's still making them and he's, uh, he's just completely gone into the pick lock, uh, custom pick lock. Uh, thing to where he's uh, making everything from scratch and the guy is really really good at what he does but his prices have skyrocketed since I've gotten uh, since I've gotten this knife from him and actually he's become pretty well known in the in the knife uh, in the switchblade custom switchblade world but I don't know I've been I've kind of been out of switchblades for the switchblade scene ever since blade auction went off but i'm slowly getting back into it but yeah if you get a chance to uh chance to run into that guy picklock pat is his name and his name's pat havlin if you want you can email me and i'll shoot you his email he does do custom builds but anyway hey take it easy later stay safe